Hi everyone, Mrs Sawyer again. I left you with this activity at the end of the last lesson. How did you get on? For the first two lines, the whole has been divided into six equal parts. One of the parts is highlighted. This part is one sixth of the whole. Even though it's a different part highlighted on each, they still represent one sixth. The part highlighted on the bottom line represents one fifth. And on the vertical line, one quarter is highlighted. Great work if you got those right. Did you have a go at folding any more strips of paper? I tried folding my strip into half four times, and I found that the whole had been divided into 16 equal parts, with each part being 1 16 like this. In today's session, we're continuing to use the language part, whole and fraction, but we will also be using volume and 3D or three dimensional. Our stem sentences today are the whole has been divided into equal parts. One of these parts is which is one of the whole. Today, it would be great if you had any construction blocks like Lego or cubes. It's very important though that whatever you use are the same size. If you don't have anything to build with, then don't worry, you can draw instead. If you have crayons, then that will work just as well. I'm going to be using yellow and blue cubes throughout the lesson. So if you do have those colours, that would be great. Finally, it's always good to have a pen and paper handy too. In today's lesson, we're still going to use fractional notation and names, but we're going to use 3D representations. We could also call these volume models. To start with, I'd like to show you this tower of bricks that I made. Can you see how many bricks I have used? I've used six bricks. Each brick that I've used has an equal part. It might look like the yellow brick is larger because it's on top, but actually they're all the same. I wonder if we could calculate what fraction of the tower is yellow. These stem sentences are familiar to you and may help. I will say the sentences first and then see if you can repeat them back to me, filling in the blank spaces. The whole has been divided into equal parts. One of these parts is which is one of the whole. Your turn. How did you get on? Do we say them together? The whole has been divided into six equal parts. One of these parts is yellow, which is one sixth of the whole. Well done if you got that correct. Now have a look at these three models. What's the same and what's different? If you need to, pause the video now to give you some thinking time. If possible, you could discuss this with someone else in the house too. When thinking about what's the same, you may have said, all the models have six bricks, that the volume of models are all equal, that all the models have one yellow brick, and you may even say that the same fraction of one sixth is yellow in each of the models. All of those things are true. When we're thinking about what is different, you may have said that the bricks have been laid out differently, that they're not all in towers or that the one yellow brick is in a different position in each of the three models. This made me think back to the last lesson where we learned that if any equal part is highlighted, then it represents the same fraction. Jane was asked to build a tower which was one third yellow, and this is what she built. Can you see the mistake that she has made? And what would she need to do to correct it? Pause the video if you need to, and perhaps have a chat with someone else in your house. Did you work out Jane's error? Jane had used an additional three bricks, rather than including the yellow in the whole. In Jane's model, the whole had been divided into four equal parts. One of these parts is yellow, which is one quarter of the whole. For her model to represent the yellow as one third, the whole needs to be divided into three equal parts. And so Jane needs to remove one of the blue brick. Brilliant work if you were able to spot Jane's mistake. 
I'd like to set you a challenge now. If I told you that my one yellow brick represents one quarter of the whole, I wonder how many blue bricks I would need. I also wonder what my whole shape could look like. Is there more than one answer? And if there is, how many can you find? For this question, if you have any Lego pieces or cubes that are equal in size, you could use those. If not, then just have a go at drawing the answers. Pause the video now and come back when you're ready to continue. How did you get on? Did you find more than one answer? I had a go too. I wonder if we found any of the same models. For each of my models, I used one yellow brick and three blue bricks. Because the denominator is four, then I know there must be four equal parts, or in this case, four equal bricks. If one brick is yellow, then there must be three blue bricks. I started by building towers, but we learnt in the last slide that the yellow brick can go in different positions. And so in these towers, it can go in four different places. Did you draw or build models like these? Did you find any others? I started thinking about how the bricks could be arranged differently, and again, how the yellow brick could be in different positions. And I came up with these, although there, I know that there are many more I haven't built yet. I'm sure there are others that you created too. Let's have one more go at a similar question. Again, if you have equipment to build, that's great, but if not, just draw your answers. This time, my one yellow brick represents one fifth of the whole. Do you think there will be more answers or fewer answers than when the yellow represented a quarter? What could my whole look like this time? Perhaps you could start by thinking about how many different towers there could be first and then looking at different models. Pause the video now and come back when you've finished your investigation. How did you get on this time? We needed five bricks in total, one yellow and four blue. Because we had more bricks, there were more possible answers. Firstly, how many towers did you find? If you found five, well done, here are mine. I found that it helped me to follow a pattern, moving the yellow brick down one place each time. I found lots of other ways to build a model with five bricks too. Did you build or draw any of these? I've laid mine down flat, but they could also stand upright. And don't forget, the yellow brick could move into different positions too. Wow, there really are a lot of possibilities for what the whole could look like. Still thinking about three-dimensional models, I want to now think about the fraction of a whole space that is filled. Let me give you an example. You can see here that I have an OXO cube box, or the brands are available. The full box holds 12 cubes, and so each cube represents one twelfth of the whole box. If I empty the box and put one cube back in, then we could say that one twelfth of the whole box is filled. Let's have a look at another example. I have a box that is filled with packs of paper. If the whole box is filled, then it will hold five packs of paper. Each pack, therefore, represents one fifth of the whole box. If I remove all of the paper, and put back in only one pack, then we can say that one fifth of the whole is filled. These next questions continue to look at what fraction of the whole is filled. In this image, the box is the whole. Is it all filled? No. The pink section shows us that a part of the box is filled. We need to work out what fraction of the whole the pink part is. I wonder if we could work that out. Perhaps 
if we could work out how many of the pink parts would fill the whole box, that would help us. This marker on the box is there to help. I think that one more pink part might fit to the left of the marker and one to the right. How many pink parts would there be altogether? Do you agree that there would be three? Now, let's use our sentences to help us. We can say these together, filling in the answers as we go. The whole has been divided into three equal parts. One of these parts is pink, which is one third of the whole. One third of the whole is filled. We need to visualise again in this image. Once more, the box is the whole. You can see that a part of the box is filled in green, but what fraction of the box is filled this time? Again, there are some little markers to help us. Can you see that another green part would fit to the right of the one that is shown? This would fill the back half of the box, but it would not fill the box. Another two green parts would be needed in the front to fill the whole box. We can use that information to fill in the blanks of the sentence together. The whole has been divided into four equal parts. One of these parts is green, which is one quarter of the whole. One quarter of the whole is filled. Were you right? Well done. One final example. Again, the whole is the box and it is not filled. The question is, what fraction of the box is filled? Can you look closely at the picture and use this marker to support you? The sentences are there too if they're a help. Pause the video and come back when you think you have an answer. How did you do? Say the sentences with me. The whole has been divided into six equal parts. One of these parts is yellow, which is one sixth of the whole. One sixth of the whole is filled. Did you get that correct? Great work. Three of the yellow parts would fit along the bottom of the whole and two of these layers would be needed to fill the whole box. You've done a great job thinking about 3D models today and I'm going to leave you with this practice activity. It links back to the work we completed with the yellow and blue bricks earlier in the session. I wonder if you could have a go at completing this table. We can do the first one together to make sure you understand. In the first example, we know that one third of the cubes are yellow. I know then that there must be three equal parts or three bricks. If one of the bricks is yellow, then how many will be blue? Well done if you said there will be two blue cubes. It then asks what the whole could look like. You may like to build this again first and then draw a representation into the table. Mine looks like this. As long as your model has three equal parts, one in yellow and two in blue, then you are correct. If you wanted, you could investigate how many different representations you could find for each question. Well done, everyone. Bye.